These are pretty cool, right? It's wild to think that this design, along with the Futura, or as we would know it, the Explorer, uh, were unveiled to the world in 1958. That's only four years after the first Fender Stratocasters were put into production. And as someone who spent their childhood in the 90s and then started playing guitar in the early 2000s, electric guitar designs haven't really changed that much in my lifetime in stark contrast to the way computers or phones have changed, for example. So it's wild to think that if you were a guitar player in 1953, you'd never seen a Strat, you'd never seen a Flying V. They wouldn't have seen an Explorer. They definitely would not have seen a Firebird. The Firebird didn't come out until 1963. It's easy to understate how forward-thinking these designs were, but it's pretty easy to measure how unpopular especially the V and the Explorer were at the start of their lifetimes based on the sales. Like there's basically maybe around a hundred flying Vs from 1958 out there in the wild. And like so many things when it comes to electric guitar designs, I mean, the Les Paul is no different in this case. The design's forward thinking, but no one kind of gets it at the time. I mean, why would you buy a flying V when you could go and buy a Stratocaster? I mean, the Stratocaster at the time was still a pretty out there radical design. Maybe the V was just taking it one step too far at the time. But then of course they're unpopular, they're hard to find, maybe a bit of mystique builds around them, maybe they're cheap and people who can't afford to go out and buy the top of the line Fender like a Jazzmaster at the time decides to get an old Explorer or a Flying V. And then the design takes on a life of its own. When I think of the Firebird, uh, I think of Johnny Winter. Like I grew up with a lot of Johnny Winter being played in the house, this guitar design in particular, I just associate with him. And, you know, it does have that classic car from the 60s vibe about it, even to the name, right? Where the neck through body, that was a new thing that wasn't really that popular with guitar design at the time. The multi-laminated neck, I'm not sure if you can quite see that on there, but that is a great way to get around some of the issues that you have with using a single piece of timber when it comes to warping and bending. You use multiple pieces in there, you kind of strengthen it up. The upper fret access on the Firebird and the V in particular are really, really great. And what I love about the Firebird is that when you sit it on your knee, the neck is on a really great angle to actually just kind of reach up. You don't have to like put yourself in an uncomfortable position. And I quite like, even though it takes a bit of getting used to, that the tailpiece basically sits around where my navel is. So when I rest my hand on here and I go to play, uh, it's kind of already out here. It's in a good position. My shoulders are really straight. It's ergonomic. <laughs> You can clearly see the influence of Fenders on the Firebird, whereas I think it's a little less obvious on guitars like the Explorer. And yes, I know this one says Hamer on the headstock and not Gibson. This is pretty much a one to one 58 spec. Hamer made in the USA in 2008. This is one of the finest electric guitars that I own. What I like about the Explorer is, well, I mean, it's a lightning bolt shape, right? It's quite a big guitar and I'm quite a tall person. so playing a gig with an Explorer on, the guitar kind of looks scaled to my body, whereas playing a Strat or a Les Paul maybe looks like an oversized ukulele. This particular one, I have a Duncan 78 in the bridge and a Duncan Jazz in the neck. 
sounds pretty mega, whereas the Firebird sounds almost Strat-like with its mini humbuckers and the fact that you can really riff out and play rhythm guitar on the neck pickup. This thing is like the ultimate in thickness. And when I think of the Gibson sound, this almost takes a Les Paul and takes it even further. <laughs> I almost think of the Explorer style shape as the metal rhythm guitar because it sounds so thick, chunky and aggressive. And then the V is the metal lead guitar because, you know, in contrast, you have so much upper fret access on here. I mean, the neck on this particular example, which again, this one says Gibson on the headstock, but it's actually an Epiphone reissue. I put some Mr. Glynn's humbuckers in here, uh, lets you get all the way up to the 22nd fret. And if you listen to players like Michael Schenker, who basically influenced everyone who came after him as a lead guitar player, but particularly uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, all the thrash players and all the heavy metal players of the 80s, you don't have Michael Schenker, then you don't have Wolf Hoffman from Accept. You don't have Dave Mustaine, Kirk Hammett, James Hetfield. Like Michael's such an important player and his brother Rudy wrote so many iconic riffs as well. I feel like the Scorpions on their own really, really need a reappreciation in terms of their impact on you know, arena rock and heavy metal and thrash in particular. But I'm getting sidetracked. These two designs, uh, you know, 1958, Gibson came out with these. And of course, no one got it at the time. And then a little later, they came out with the Firebird. And I should mention as well, the Firebird is actually pretty similar to the Explorer. This is a Gibson from the early 90s. So it's a Firebird 5, meaning it's got two of the mini humbuckers. I think the 7 has three. The Firebird 1 has one on there. Uh, nevertheless, like you kind of overlap them. They're actually a very, very similar shape. This is almost like a finessed version of the Explorer. I've put the Steinberger 40 to 1 ratio tuners on here, which I really like. I've also put the same tuners on the Explorer. I mean, they look kind of weird. And I saw something online recently where, yeah, changing strings is a little bit weird, but the control you get when you're tuning is so important. So other innovations in these guitars, I mean, the Firebird neck through the body on here completely. It's got a multi-laminate neck as well, which you can probably see uh, through the body on there. So if you're worried about using a single piece of timber and having it warp or get bent out of shape, having a multi-laminate in there with the grain flipped around is a really great idea. And then, I mean, I'm just gonna put this down over here and hope that it doesn't fall over. A massive, massive influence with the Explorer style design is the droopy, I've seen some people call this a banana headstock. Some people call this a hockey stick headstock. You know, think of all the guitars in the 80s, like Kramer's, Jackson's, Charvel's that had that Explorer style headstock on there. It's essentially a way of taking the Fender six inline headstock. And yes, of course, I know the Fender six inline headstock comes from the Bigsby and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the Strat popularize it. Massive, massive production numbers. Never been out of production. Iconic design. Uh, you take that, you add a bit of an angle and a droop to it, and I think you get one of the coolest looking headstocks of all time on there. So these three guitar designs, why am I doing this video? Why am I talking about them? I just really like them. And again, going back to starting playing guitar in the 2000s, these were just designs that I took for granted. And it's not until I've got a little bit older and I've learned a little bit about the history, not just of the guitars, but the people who played them. Like the fact that Albert King played a flying V, strung up right-handed, he played it left-handed. 
So the high E string, you can pull down in it, and that's where he was doing those massive bends. And if you've ever bent a string on an electric guitar, you owe a little bit to Albert King. If you've ever played some fast extended pentatonics, you owe a little bit to Michael Schenker. Uh, another great player known for playing the Flying Bees, Lonnie Mack. If you've never listened to Lonnie Mack, Lonnie Mack was massively influential on so many Texas bluesmen, in particular Stevie Ray Vaughan. Fun fact as well, my dad wanted to name me Lonnie when I was a kid. He loves Lonnie Mack and the Flying Bee. So uh, thanks for vetoing that one, Mum. And the Explorer, again, I mean, such a cool looking shape. There's so many variations on this. Like every guitar builder worth their salt kind of builds an Explorer style guitar out there. You've got the droopy headstock, which influenced all the Super Strat designs in the 80s, of course. You've got the overall balance and scale so that tall people don't have to look super weird when they're playing a guitar. And then of course, from this, a little bit later, you get the Firebird design, which, I mean, Firebirds just look and sound like Firebirds, you know, totally unique in the Gibson lineup. I think most people think of a Gibson and they think of like a big fat thick sound. Give them a Firebird and you get kind of the fattest Strat of all time. It's still something that's bright and slinky, but there's just a variation on it. And these humbuckers, you know, never tried a Firebird neck pickup in a Telecaster or a Strat for that matter. It's a really, really cool sound. So yeah, there's so much innovation going on and so much happened uh, in terms of, you know, the functional aspects of the designs, but also the aesthetics, like the influence of art movements at the time on these guitars as well. And, you know, the whole post-World War II space age thing as well. Like you can break all the rules with design and imagine things that haven't been done before. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, I'm going to just play a bunch of riffs on this guitar. This is actually, Hamer called this a standard. I still call it an Explorer. You all call it an Explorer. Uh, let me know your favorite out of the Flying V, the Explorer, the Firebird, or any other designs from that era that you consider really influential on the overall aesthetics and sound of electric guitar. If you like these kind of videos, let me know in the comments. If you dig what I'm doing here on the channel, you can support me in a bunch of different ways. Have a great day. Go pick up your guitar, make some noise. I'll see you next time.